thank Anne-Marie for inviting me and, and really congratulate you on a great crowd because uh, as the co-chair of the Bipartisan Urban Caucus at one point, the Arts Caucus at one point, the Talent Caucus at one point, we would bring speakers to the Mackinac Room and, and we certainly never had these tables filled and we'd lucky if we got you know three or five tables filled so this is a great crowd and I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about what I've largely been doing since I've been in the legisl uh, left the legislature at the beginning of 2009, and I was approached uh, immediately by the New Economy Initiative for Southeast Michigan, uh, the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce, and the Skillman Foundation about some innovative thought around our economic crisis. In case you don't know these, I don't know how much you live these in the Michigan legislature is Certainly, I lived them uh, during my six years. Unfortunately, I presided while uh, a lot of this stuff happened, so obviously my career in politics should have ended when it did. Um, we lost a million jobs uh, between 2000 and 2009, from 4.7 million to 3.9 million, the largest job loss of, of any state. Uh, one out of every five jobs in the state disappeared. We're slowly growing some of those jobs back, but we are nowhere near, I think we're somewhere in the 4.2 million range or something like that. So we're still a half million off our peak. Uh, we went from the 17th wealthiest state in per capita income uh, at the end of 1999, just at the bottom part of the top third, to 40th in 2009. And we still are around 37th, 38th uh, in the country. We readjusted uh, during this decade for where we were in terms of the percent of college educated, if you uh, ever listen to Lou, uh, Lou Glazer and Michigan Future. We lost uh, a quarter of our uh, home sale price. 33% uh, of our uh, mortgages were underwater, and that's $63 billion that was lost by families like mine and, and yours. And in fact, I just heard today that while uh, Zillow said real estate prices in Metro Detroit are up 13%, they are still over a quarter off their peak um, from 2005. This is the, uh, this is the jobless recovery. So um, you can see uh, that despite uh, these years at the, at the far right of this graph, um, that black line flatlining shows the kind of economic recovery. But this jobless recovery is kind of the um, area that I entered into in 2009 when I was asked by those foundations, by the chamber, to look at how can immigration be an economic development tool and job creator. That's the question. What is innovative about what Governor Snyder has been talking about, what Global Detroit has been talking about, about the programs that you're hearing about, is we are talking about immigration not as a political issue, not as a human rights or civil rights issue, not as a social justice issue. We are asking questions that what does all, what do all of us in Michigan, what do the 10 million Michiganders, what are the uh, challenges and the opportunities that they face around immigration? So given that, we started to uh, ask, where do the jobs come from? Well, uh, the Kauffman Foundation says that all net job creation in America over the last 25 years comes from startup. They created 40 million new jobs. Some of you may think startups is small, but, in a, but it obviously Google's a startup to some extent, Facebook's a startup. These are tens of thousands of, of folks. Um, new firms, on average, every year add $3 million jobs to the economy, and older companies, uh, you know, your Sears, uh, your autos, um, they lose a million dollar, uh, uh, jobs a year on an annual basis. So when you think about net job creation, it's not that startup companies uh, are everything, they're actually the only thing. So you would think we'd be really laser focused on who builds up the, the job, the, the startups. You know, you would think we'd welcome uh, the job creators, the startup folks, as superheroes, right? Well, in 2011, 28% of the small businesses started in this country were started by immigrants. Almost, or more than a quarter, almost a third. And in fact, this is not a new phenomenon. Uh, we are, uh, you've, it's been said, it's trite now to say we're a nation of immigrants, but if you look at the wealthiest countries, uh, wealthiest companies in the world, they are actually started by uh, immigrants and or their children here in the United States. Um, more than 40% of the fi Fortune 500 companies were founded by immigrants or their children. They employ 10 million people and they have revenues of $4.2 trillion, greater than the GT GDP of every country in the world except for US, China, and Japan. So these are, you know, the governor likes to talk about Myers, 
Dow, and Masco as immigrant-founded uh, Michigan companies. We think of them as Michigan companies. They're all technically founded by immigrants. These are other uh, companies throughout our history founded by immigrants. AT&T, Levi's, Budweiser, Google, Pfizer, on and on. Uh, you heard uh, Peter mention driving uh, the innovation economy. Well, immigrants are filing patents at twice the rate of U.S. born. By the way, one of the interesting statistics is as a metropolitan region grows in its foreign-born population, its innovation rate, its patent filing rate gr grows. What they found is it's not just the immigrants. Actually, native-born patent production grows with the presence of immigrants. In other words, you introduce more immigrants into a region, the non-immigrant people start producing patents at a faster rate. There's something about that diversity mix that works. Uh, in this state, in 2006, the only year I've ever seen statistics for, according to uh, data from the World Intellectual Property Organization, which is a, an international patent, which are the patents that have the most commercial viability, so these are the ones that drive the economy, greater than 50% of the patents emanating from the state were filed by at least one foreign-born inventor, meaning foreign-born inventors in this state were eight, or foreign-born persons in this state were eight times more likely to file an international patent. Immigrants uh, across the country, Duke and Berkeley, have done some groundbreaking research a few years ago uh, and found that a quarter of all the high-tech firms, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the slide here. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'll come back to the other slide. Uh, a quarter of all the high-tech firms um, nationally between 1995 and 2005 had an immigrant founder or co-founder. The highest penetration is in Silicon Valley, the, the home to the world's innovation, 52%. Michigan, a 6%, 5 to 6% foreign-born state, had 32.8% of the high-tech firms in this state had an immigrant founder or co-founder. We rank third in the country. We are an outlier state. Michigan's immigrants are six times as likely to create a high-tech firm as our native-born persons. Uh, Peter said uh, the overall uh, numbers uh, for Nobel Prizes in, in, in science, um, but when I wrote the report, I it was published in 2010, the last year available was 2009. In that year, eight of the nine Nobel Prize winners in the science were Americans, and five of those eight Americans were foreign-born. So if you were an immigrant to the United States, if they were their own country, they actually would have been the number one country in the world for Nobel Prizes. Randomly, I'm talking to you in 2014, the last year uh, we had uh, uh, for last year's Nobel Prize winners, uh, they come out in the fall, six of the eight Nobel Prize winners in science in 2013 were Americans. And four of those six Americans were foreign born. Once again, meaning that if you were a foreign born American, you were the most likely of any country in the world uh, to win a Nobel Prize in science. They account for a quarter of all the high tech venture firms that go public. Uh, they're three times as likely to major in STEM. Actually, so Peter, uh, the numbers that he gave are accurate. In Michigan, we actually have higher STEM penetration than the rest of the country. So close to 18% of our college students are in STEM, but we think more than 60% actually of our university systems. Immigrants make up 50% of all, and international students, 50% of all the new PhDs in engineering issued in U.S. colleges and uh, universities. 45% of all the PhDs in life sciences, physical sciences, computer sciences. 40% of all the new master's degrees in computer sciences, physical sciences, and engineering. And 25% of all the practicing physicians. These are the new economy dri drivers. These are the best and brightest in the world. We are... Uh, we'd be foolish not to focus on them, and we are a winner because in Michigan, we are the only state, the only place in the country with a program to try to address this talent pool and recruit them. And it's not just the graduates from MSU and U of M and other schools. It's actually, we want people from other colleges and universities across the country that want to come here. The act of immigrating itself is entrepreneurial. And that's borne out in statistics. Immigrants are twice as likely to start uh, businesses across the country as native-born Amer Americans. And over a 10-year period here in the state, um, it's been three times the rate. Immigrants are younger and have li higher labor force participation rates. Very important fact for the only state that lost population in the 2010 census, for a state that is rapidly aging, does anybody know what percentage of the citizens in the state are projected to be senior citizens by the year 2030? A quarter, 25%. Do you know how many are about right now? About 14, 15%. Florida is at about 17, 18%. If we don't get younger, if we don't have a strategy uh, to keep our workforce in place, we are going to have some serious tax consequences that, and uh, issues. 
Near, yet nearly two-thirds of America is an immigrant, a child or grandchild of an immigrant, or married to an immigrant. Higher marriage rates, by the way, uh, among immigrants. But we don't talk about them as the job creators. We, we're stuck in this debate, in an understandable debate, about uh, illegal immigration, undocumented persons. Um, and we ought to be thinking strategically about jobs and our economic future. And if you ask those questions, you get very different answers. So this is not a new concept. Uh, this has been around 1953, President's Commission on Immigration. So our story was that in 2009, the study was commenced and published in 2010. In the, his first day of the state address, uh, Governor Snyder announced a Global Michigan Initiative. Uh, we launched initiatives uh, right after we uh, completed the study in 2010. And uh, that should say April 2014. We now have five fully launched initiatives. We've raised over six and a half million dollars of philanthropic and uh, corporate and public support for our. We've received a lot of national recognition for what we do. Uh, our key sponsor has been the Knight Foundation as of now, uh, though great support from Kellogg and Ford and the New Economy Initiative. And we think that to move forward, we need to do four things. Attract and retain international talent, which is what we've been talking about. Making the region welcoming for the international community. Attracting investment that creates jobs. Later today, uh, Nurten and I are going to be in Oakland County at an EB-5 uh, regional center. If you've heard about the investor visa, uh, Global Detroit's working with the Detroit China Business Association to put that together. We're going to have Mishta there with their EB-5 center as well as uh, the Dallas Regional Center. Uh, and then revitalizing the city of Detroit. Um, frankly, no urban area in America of that scale. Uh, has seen population stabilization without immigration. And we have some serious issues to tackle in Detroit around that. So we've launched program. Our most well-funded program is Prosperous. It's a micro-enterprise training program. It's based on a model out of Minneapolis, St. Paul. As of today, we've graduated 140 persons. Uh, actually, we do this in uh, low-income African-American neighborhoods as well as uh, immigrant neighborhoods. And frankly, 85% of our graduates right now are African-American. So we have a lot of work to do to to have a deeper connection with the immigrants in Detroit. Um, we have 96 people currently enrolled in the program. Uh, we have a lending program. We've made about uh, a little uh, about four or five loans to micro businesses or businesses in the city of Detroit provide other kind of support. Um, but this is a key component to keeping immigrants. We're about to launch a cultural ambassadors program. Uh, this was originally launched by then citizen uh, Rick Snyder and Karen Philpy uh, over at Ann Arbor Spark. Um, but it's a network of volunteers who want to give back, who want to attract international businesses, who want to mentor international students, young professionals, etc. So we're a couple months away from launching ours. Um, and I'm going to actually turn this over to Karen because as uh, uh, Karen has been my, she was on the advisory board for the study and, uh, and she also is my board chair so she's very aware of these programs and then she's going to give it back to me in a few slides and I'm going to talk more about something called the Global Great Lakes Network.